Okay, so after this uh, nice meeting, uh, uh, the, the, the nice uh, beginning, uh, let's uh, now turn to the scientific session. And I'd like to invite uh, Professor Tomasz Sobinski, who will uh, carry out the next uh, session. Good morning, my name is Tomasz Sobinski. I think I'm almost the youngest student of Professor Białynicki. Uh, my scientific life started 20 years ago under supervision of Professor Białynicki. I was the master student of him and then PhD student. But now we switch to the scientific part and it is my great honor and pleasure to, uh, to invite Professor Białynicki Birula to give his presentation. Uh, this is the first time in my life I introduce you. Uh, but in fact, it is not needed <laughs> now because everyone knows. So, uh, Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me. Now, let's go down to business. I'm sorry for those who are not physicists, but I will try to make also some comments that can be understood by, by everybody. Now, I have selected this topic for two reasons. First, it's a very simple talk as far as physical content is concerned. And second, that it so happened that we recently contributed something which is worth knowing. Now, the title is about panic trap. So, what is the penny trap? Well, penny trap will be shown in a moment, but now the background. We have written recently a paper which is being published where we found some new solutions. I always love to find new solutions of some important equations in physics. This time, these new solutions are concerned with Penning trap. Penning trap. What is penning trap? Penning trap is a very simple device as far as the concept is concerned. Could be understood by the first year students of physics. It's a trap that is keeping particles inside by a very elementary combination of magnetic and electric fields. It is a highly popular example. It was also proposed as a possible promising quantum computer. Now, it was named after Franz Penning, who was a Dutch physicist. That's interesting history. Notice that Penny published his paper in a Dutch journal that still exists, Physica, but in those days German was the language of physics. So even though that was a Dutch journal, and we know that Dutch people are fluent in English, they published in German in those days. And the title of this publication was the glow discharge at low pressures or the thing that Penning was working on. Philips laboratory in those days had a division where they were producing electronic lamps for radio and everything else and those people here in the audience who are of some age who still remember how radio worked in the old days. That was before the discovery of transistor. So, Penning Trap is extremely popular. This is a monograph devoted entirely to the Penning Trap. It has 455 pages and it has 1045 references all about Penny trap. This is another picture which shows the versatility of the applications. 
in this paper, I don't know whether you can see it clearly, but you see the wealth of problems that can be studied with the use of pen ink trap, including such important things as dark matter, special theory of relativity where penning trap is essential. Now, what is the greatest, according to the achievement of the penning trap? Is the accuracy with which nowadays experiments in physics are done. This is something in the old days this was called astronomical precision. Now it could also be named precision in elementary quantum measurements. This recent measurement of people at the University of Washington in Seattle measured the electromagnetic moment up to 10 to 12 significant digits. Now, to show you also the complications that one encounters when producing theoretical result, and Professor Pachutsky, who is here, the world expert on those measurements, I'm sure recognizes this precision. I mentioned here Kinoshita. Kinoshita is a very special physicist. For his whole life, he started his career at Cornell. He was a student of Bethe. Bethe was really the father of quantum electrodynamics because he was the first to see the possibility of removing infinite expressions that were then found in some calculations. And the group of Kinoshita had to calculate 12,600 diagrams that were needed to achieve the accuracy of the experiment. Of course, Kinoshita is also known as really the father of numerical quantum calculations. In the good old days, I don't know whether even in this audience there are some people old enough, at CERN they produced the first language, computer language, reduce that was possible to use when one did not purely numerical calculations that were done with Fortran, but symbolic calculations. I even tried once to use it, but then a few years later, Mathematica came, and there was no need for reduce. <coughs> I still remember seeing Kinoshita at one of the conferences running around with a bunch of punch cards, IBM punch cards, and all the calculations were of these punch cards. Now, what is the penning trap? Here is the penning trap that was used by Gabriels and his people. It's a big device. As you see, it's one meter across. And then you go inside, and inside this, let me point out, is this part here, Side that has three centimeters, and the penning trap is inside of this three centimeter thing. But of course, since this precision is extremely high, one has to cool it with helium, etc., etc. So this is my beloved penning trap. Also here you can see it. And what happens in the penning trap? The electron is kept inside. Penning trap is something where you can keep individual quantum particles isolated from the environment 
And there is a very simple combination, even, even for those who do not understand the full dynamics of this, you see that the formulas for the electric and magnetic fields are as simple as they can be. And what is the trapping mechanism? This problem has some interesting history. There was a physicist, Earnshaw, who proved that you cannot have particles trapped by electric field. And that is because the electric field cannot trap particles. It would have to act in the direction inside. And such a field cannot be created because there are some conditions coming from Maxwell equations. So in addition to the electric field, we have the magnetic field. The magnetic field has the property, not that it pulls the particles along the magnetic field, but it makes them rotate. So you rotate with the magnetic field, and you keep in the direction of magnetic field the particles with the use of the electric field. Extremely simple example. Not only that, but what is the Hamiltonian? The Hamiltonian is a quadratic function. And for a quadratic function, we can do anything. Students of second year physics can find analytic solutions quite easily. So we have a very simple Hamiltonian. And it was really very surprising that what people have been doing with this Hamiltonian was not something that really explained the whole thing. We keep quantum particles, so we should have quantum theory describing this. But the language we are using, and it's still being used even by such sophisticated people like Gabriels and others, is the classical language. One says that the electron in this penny trap goes around and around and around. There are certain frequencies characteristic for this particular motion. And this classical description does not correspond to the quantum description, because in the quantum description, this is the classical description. This is the trajectory, almost chaotic, because there are three frequencies. And if they are not commensurate, then this is not a periodic system. Now we have solution in quantum theory. The solution in quantum theory can be worked out by students, again, of the first course in quantum mechanics. It's a good exercise. It involves some classical polynomials. And this is the picture. So what is the picture representing these quantum solutions? Their distributions of probability where this electron is seen. And when you go back now, here, you see what is the connection between these orbits that electrons go around and around with these probability distributions. And in this paper, which I mentioned at the beginning, we have shown that there is a very simple relationship which should be known to all people who are interested in panic traps and other things. Namely, we can combine this classical picture with the quantum picture by the mechanism which we call injection. My wife didn't like this term, but I insisted that we have to include this in our paper. Injection, it sounded too medical. <laughs> injection of classical trajectories into the quantum state. How is this done mathematically? There is a formula. There is a formula to every wave function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation. We can assign a new wave function which has the classical trajectory <coughs> injected inside. What does this injection produce? You can see here, you have the function which has the argument are shifted by the classical trajectory. So we have a very nice 
now combination of classical physics and quantum physics, and this allows us to find a new way to describe this problem. Since I have gotten the Wigner medal, I must mention Wigner function. Of course, Wigner function for this particular solution is very, very nice because it just shows this is uh, the lower line here, Wigner function, with the injection trajectory. What is the significance of this formula? You can see that instead of being concentrated and sitting without motion, this Wigner function travels around the phase space all the time along the classical trajectory. Now this is a phenomenon that was first discovered by Paul Ehrenfest, and this is called Ehrenfest theorem, that quantum description corresponds to classical description if we consider wave functions that are built in such a way that they stay together for some period of time and that the center of this wave packet is moving along the classical trajectory. This is a perfect example because the shape of this wave packet does not change. It's a rigid shape that is just moving, moving along the center of mass, is moving along the classical trajectory. What does it mean that the shape does not change? All the central moments are fixed. They do not depend on time. Now, let's go further, and I will finish with something rather unexpected, namely, quadratic Hamiltonians are everywhere. All physicists in their lives encountered at some stage quadratic Hamiltonians. There is one very big, very huge quadratic Hamiltonian system which is called the electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field is built from many, 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 infinitely many oscillators. One can imagine that this is how it is working. So electromagnetic field as a whole entity can be described in terms of harmonic oscillators. For harmonic oscillators, for the quadratic Hamiltonians, we have the injection method. So what happens if you take the electromagnetic field now and write down first the Hamiltonian, and this is, as you see, quadratic Hamiltonian, then we can describe it classically, like classical mechanics by introducing canonical variables that obey the Poisson brackets and the Poisson brackets gets combined with the Hamiltonian, produce our beloved Maxwell equations. And this is what we have to do. We have to associate the quantum picture now. We have the classical theory of the Maxwell equations. And with this, we can also associate the quantum picture. And now we have our injection method. So how does this work? We have the quantum Hamiltonian now, which corresponds to the classical Hamiltonian. And we know that with every quantum state, we can associate a classical motion by injecting the classical trajectory. Now, the quantum state, here comes John Archibald Wheeler, mentioned already by Wood and a wonderful man. Many of you may know that he invented the black hole. He was the one who named Schwarzschild's solutions of the Einstein equations black holes. <coughs> and when I met John Wheeler at some point, I asked him to say something about black holes and he took a napkin that was a restaurant in Ulm 
and he drew the picture of the black hole, which I still have. So here is the quantum state of the electromagnetic field. Nothing happens, as you see, there's no time dependence. It's just sitting there because what is the quantum state depicted by Wheeler? This is the vacuum of the electromagnetic field, who is just sitting there, not doing anything. But now we come to this point of injecting the classical trajectory. And the analogy with ordinary one-dimensional harmonic oscillator is so close that one can do it without doing any calculations. What one does is to take this object and inject the classical trajectory. What is the classical trajectory for the Maxwell equation? It's the le classical electromagnetic field. So we do this injection and we produce the new state which should be called the Maxwellian coherent state because this state is not just sitting steadily at one point. It's moving along the solutions of Max classical Maxwell equations. And the calculation will show that the expectation value of the electromagnetic field in this state is just the Maxwell solution. This is what opticians, quantum opticians, call the coherent state, except that coherent state as introduced by Roy Glauber, were introduced in terms of creation, dilation operators, the displacement operator of Glauber played this role. Here we have an argument which is based purely on classical solutions which are injected into the quantum state. By the way, one can also produce the figure function for the state which looks beautiful. Again, and the epilogue here is the message. I wish that all physicists in this audience take this seriously, and whenever they encounter a harmonic oscillator, they try to inject the classical trajectory and see what happens. And this is also a message that still there are problems. Of course, I am an old physicist, so I like old physics, where there was less speculation, but at least what now is old physics is less speculative, but of course when it was born there were as many speculations as now about various things, but they died out and what remained from this old physics, like the Schrodinger equation, the Maxwell equation, etc., is still alive and one can do something with it if one has enough patience to play with these formulations of old physics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now it's time for questions. Any questions about that? It was so simple that the... But I must say it is strongly connected with my master thesis. Because in my master thesis, we, I wrote a thesis about the rotating trap, not penning trap, but rotating trap under your supervision, and you showed me all this beauty of ECT. Of course, rotation is yes. like the magnetic field. Exactly, exactly, of course. So. Yes, please. Uh, here, here, here. That, that was a great talk, and, and, and I want you to come to Ulm and give this in the colloquial, because that really tells young students how to explain physics in simple terms, and so I'm always impressed. Now, historical remark, uh, in the 90s we looked at the Powell trap, and, yes. can, can, and, yes. and in the Powell trap, of course, it's also quadratic. So you but can, it's a different mechanism because it's time dependent. Correct, correct. But still, it holds that, of course, the, the wave packet goes around and it follows just a classical trajectory. But, of course, the mechanism is different because now it's the Mathieu equation that holds everything together. I am also very fond of our trap because in our work uh, on the Rydberg 
That's states, right. the same mechanism was applied. Mm -hmm. Another question? Yes, sir. Okay, I I like the injection of a classical trajectory. So can I ask a question about uh, when you inject the classical trajectory to the quantum uh, uh, solution to the original uh, uh, orig uh, shooting equation, that inject after injection of classical pass, uh, the solution also satisfy shooting equation. Could you repeat the question? I didn't. So we uh, we inject uh, classical trajectory into the uh, the solution of shooting equation, yeah. and then that. Solution satisfies shooting equation? Yes, yes. This is the theorem that we consider to be a mathematical theorem. If you have a quadratic Hamiltonian and you have solutions of the Schrodinger equation, the theorem states that a new solution obtained by this method obeys also the Schrodinger equation. Let's just check in the mathematics that proves the theorem. Yes, please. So I, I, I think that the, the same strategy can be applied also to the Coulomb problem. Because ah, ah, ah. You know. Hold it, hold it. That is a good exercise for graduate students. <laughs> Do the same for the Coulomb forces. Coulomb forces are non quadratic. And I already encountered this problem when I tried to generalize this method to the Dirac equation. Dirac equation is so different that it is not a trivial task to generate new solutions by some transformation like this transformation in another atomistic case. Of course, that would be beautiful if one could construct the solutions of the Schrodinger equation that look like Keplerian orbits. But that but I show you what I have still remains to be solved. Yes, but, but, but what I have in mind is that a uh, Coulomb problem can be turned to the harmonic oscillator yeah. problem if you change the increase of time yes. in a non-linear way. So it is actually a harmonic oscillator problem. And well, could be that it would work. I tried, I did not succeed. I offered this problem to anybody who is interested. And that would be a very nice Continuation. Who's that? Next question. Thank you for a fantastic talk. So what you what you showed is how it, it works for a single particle equation. Yes. Uh, what what happens if we have many uh, body system? Good question. The origin of this paper goes back several years when we studied Bose-Einstein condensation. And then you have both the Einstein condensate, condensate kept in a trap, and we then showed, which now we think we understand it better, that the center of mass motion of the condensate goes along the classical trajectory if the trap is harmonic, if it is a harmonic oscillator. So, it was our inspiration to look back at this paper and see how this would work for the penny trap. And it did work. It's a different situation because now we also have magnetic field and electric field, but it could be generalized because it is still a quadratic hamutan. Okay, thank you very much.